Hello everybody, Tommy Ruin here, and recently Project Ascension pushed out their biggest patch ever. And they cleaned up a lot of the existing systems they have while implementing a few new ones. In this video, I'm going to go over the patch notes and the changes which they implemented in this patch. So to start with, they completely overhauled the drop on death system. And they have basically made it so gear drop has been decreased to 1 to 4 items and is based on the player's level and average item level. So this new system will offer decent value to the killer and won't absolutely ruin the person who gets killed. They'll still have some of the stuff left. I still think they should implement a runescape style system where you can choose three items to safeguard and whatever drops after that is just down to the fact that you haven't safeguarded them. But I think this is pretty good because as they say in their little patch note update, uh, it's near impossible to recover from losing 10 of your raid epics. So it should fix the whole risk reward system as a whole. And they've also said that materials dropped on death will be a percentage of your total based on sale price. They also implemented a great system to combat people being camped and this is the resurrect in a capital city and this is a system which means that if you're being camped and you're dying or you're dead sorry when you're dead you will get a little button pop up at the top of the middle of your screen and it says resurrect in a capital city and this takes you to your capital city but it removes all durability on any items you're wearing or in your bag and it also gives you res sickness but this means that you get away from those campers and you just got to spend 10 minutes and a bit of gold to repair your items so this system is really there to combat those gankers and for those people who really don't have time to take shit from gankers which i think is a really great change it means that people get less tired of just being repetitively killed trying to loot their stuff back um, now they also added transmog i've made a whole video on that i've made two videos one didn't go so well um, but basically the Archmages have set up shop throughout Azeroth and you can find them in every capital city around the world and they will allow you to change the appearance of your gear into another item that you own. I'll put a link in the description for my overview of the transmog system. They've removed hunger um, which was a massive change to be honest because hunger was a system that was quite annoying and they didn't really implement it so that it gave you any benefit to be full. It was just a negative effect to be hungry. If they managed to make it so that it wasn't too game breaking and they could increase your XP gain if you were full, then I think that would be a good system to add. But other than that, it just seems like a really annoying change to make to have hunger in the game. So removing it's probably for the best until they work out what they want to do with it. Now the PvP toggle until level 20 was part of that same video and I'll put a link in the description for those. But it basically means that while you're trying out your class and your spec, you can now do that up until level 20 without the fear of being killed in PvP. You can turn it on and off as you wish, but it's it just means that you're safe until level 20. So all is fine up until level 20. Now, one of the biggest changes they've made in this patch is hard modes for dungeons and raids. And I'm going to be making a separate video on this, but the overview is... But there are certain perks for each difficulty range and this means that they'll drop more loot but it means that the bosses will add mechanics and they'll be a lot lot harder. I know for a fact that the one in Blackrock Depths is significantly harder when you activate hard mode. His health goes from like 60k to 300k and he can one shot you if you want. These hard modes are activated doing special events within the boss rooms or within the dungeon and these are all secret and it's going to be great fun trying to work out how you activate hard modes in different dungeons. So that's going to be really cool and it's a great system to be added. But I'll make a separate video on that in the future once I've got him down. And they've completely overhauled energize effects. Um, they should be working as intended now. So any spell that grants energy or rage should function as the tooltips indicate. Now this is a good change because it means that people who are playing say feral druids who were lacking a lot of energy can now do these abilities and actually smooth out their rotations a little bit. They've completely overhauled the random enchant system and they have updated over 140 enchants which are now working. What it boils down to is what the team actually want to do with random enchants and they've said in their update, we're unhappy with people using gear marginally below their level solely for the random enchants. 
So the solution is a tier system based on item level and player level. This means that you will get more relevant enchants when you're a lower level and you'll be less inclined to search every green on the auction house for that one special enchant. That is a good change but it devalues low level greens I think and having low level greens being quite expensive, say the one that gives soul shards on kills, I think that's quite cool that you can have, like you're leveling up, you pick up that one green and you're like damn I'm going to be rich now. So it, it, it has its pros, it has its cons, because having to wear level 20 greens to get your random enchant set is kind of bad. So it's good that they've picked up on that, and I think that's quite a good change to make, to make it so it's a tier-based system. Now, they have also, over the last month, added 10 new members to the team, and they're gaining momentum. They're currently looking for more C++ developers, SQL developers, and a couple of extra members for the Quality Assurance team and you can apply on the forums if you are interested. This is a great thing to see. It means that they're not like they're not set on their current size at the moment. They're expanding and that means things are just going to get bigger and better. So we can expect a lot more from this new big team and a massive welcome to all those new members who have joined. They have opened a playstyle discussion forum which is for players to give input on how they would like to see spell interactions work on Ascension and I'll put the link on how you can join in that discussion in the description. Now another thing which is great for those newbies who are joining the game is the fact that they've added tutorial menus to the game. So like you do when you log into a new character you get tutorials pop up. Well they have added custom ascension ones which will help get over that initial oh shit what the hell am I doing here feeling when you join ascension. And I think this is absolutely perfect because I know that when I joined I didn't know how some things were class masked and things like that so if there's tooltips in the game which will go over that then that is just great. Now they've also finished the exploits with login sessions so now your character will remain in the world for a period of time if you attempt to disconnect while in combat and you'll be declined logging into an account that is already online so this will prevent people avoiding dying in PvP. So this basically stops people from exploiting the fact that they could get out of PvP by disconnecting. Now finally they have updated evade mode and pathing on lots of mobs and this should permanently resolve creatures in the world being stuck in an evade state which I came across quite a bit in the uh, while I was leveling up. So this means that they will not avoid you hitting them and it will stop them causing the evade reset which is really good. It means that they're going back and polishing the leveling bugs as well as looking over the hardest bugs and I think that's a massive shout out to Morrigan there because he was the one who sorted that out and apparently it was a very good fix so good job Morrigan. And at the bottom of the post they said what's to come and I assume this is like a little timeline here. They've got the Anixis Lair testing up, official timeline release from Vanilla to Wrath of the Lich King which is a big thing. You'll be able to see what they think is going to happen and a whole softcore beta, which I know a lot of people are excited about. Glory PvP system. I have no idea what that's about. I'm going to have to do some digging there. Uh, better tool tips, and then the release date announcement. The one we've all been waiting for. When is this game going to go live? Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, and I will see you all very soon. Oh, this thing just keeps going on. Ba-da-ba-ba-da -ba -ba -da.